Welcome to Summit's Online Encounter. Our mission is to provide locations where people like you can have life-changing experiences with God. This is one of those locations. We also gather each week as a church in the heart of St. Paul. As disciples of Christ, we're doing our best to be on mission, deliver hope, and champion this city. At any point in your journey, if you want to take the next steps, or you just want to stay in the loop with everything going on at Summit, just grab your phone and simply text the phrase, Be Known, to 651-360-2908. We will send you a short form. Please complete it so you can be known in our Summit family. There's always new opportunities to mention, so here's what's coming up soon. We hope you take advantage of these opportunities to grow in community and your own faith. One of the ways to grow your faith is through worship. Worship with our lives in serving and also worshiping Jesus with a song. We have pre-recorded music in our sanctuary to create a place for you to worship with us virtually. So focus in, give way to the space needed, and invest some time in worshiping Jesus.
I love the city of St. Paul. No matter where you're from, you just might love your city or find things that you actually can appreciate about it. If a uh, rural area or a metropolitan area, a high-rise city or just a small quaint town, there are amazing things about cities. But specifically St. Paul, I gotta say, it's one of those spaces and places that you get to find yourself just attracted for all the right and wrong reasons. St. Small, as some people call it, is an amazing city on this Mississippi River. And it's right where we are. It's our context. And one of our values here at Summit uh, is context, being focused locally, but also globally. And not one or the other, but both. And not globally before locally, but locally and globally. This is so important to know. But one of the things I love about St. Paul is the high temperature uh, in September, uh, specifically, it's about 71 degrees. St. Paul in September might be the closest thing to San Diego all year long. Uh, it, we have more shoreline on the Mississippi River um, than any other city uh, in the world. The city, St. Paul, was actually going to be called Pig's Eye, which, to be honest, I'm actually, well, kind of glad they didn't call it Pig's Eye. Um, it was after this guy that made his living uh, selling liquor to soldiers um, at the fort here. Old pig's eyes, what they called them. Uh, don't ask, we'll move on. Rice Park, the park downtown, uh, that's called Rice, <laughs> is actually uh, older um, than what's the one? Central Park in New York City. Rice Park is actually older. It's a lot smaller, but it's it's technically older. The, the dome in the Capitol, the unsupported dome, um, it's this huge dome um, when you walk in there and it's marble that's unsupported. It's all just kind of cut together to hold itself. It's the second largest uh, in the world. The only one that's larger as an unsupported marble dome is the Taj Mahal, which is kind of interesting uh, when you think about it. Um, if you ever seen Snoopy, Linus, um, you know, that whole Peanuts series, actually that was created here. Um, Charles Schultz grew up in St. Paul. Uh, Amelia Earhart lived here uh, while she went to Century High. Uh, there's this diner called Mickey's Diner and it's downtown and it's where they filmed part of the Mighty Ducks and they're renovating it right now and I can't wait to get out there and eat again. It is an amazing greasy spoon that you just wanna make sure your food is cooked well because, yeah, it's just, it's, as Jim, Jim Gaffigan says, it's kind of like eating out of a gas station bathroom. Um, Bill Murray is the owner of the St. Saint Paul Saints, and he's also the team psychologist that explains a lot about, you know, the team itself. And then there's this thing uh, that's kind of taken the whole world by storm, craft brewing. You know, many years there was beers that you could choose, and it was just these big, huge breweries. And then these craft brew shops, kind of homemade brew shops popped up. But the innovator, one of the leading edge uh, craft brewing companies is Summit, um, Summit Brewing Company, and that's here in St. Paul. And they really paved the way. Uh, but my favorite thing, I gotta say, of all of the things we've contributed to the world, other than uh, the Minnesota Wild, and we could just, we could keep talking for a long time, um, Scotch Tape. Scotch tape was invented in St. Paul. There's no way we got to the moon without Scotch tape. It's true. All these things that I'm talking about uh, kind of formulate you know, what has happened here, but it begs a different question, or really maybe uh, another question. What makes a city? Like what makes a city a city? Is it accomplishments, it's people? Is it's, it's geography, it's, it's geometry, it's architecture, it's uh, position in the world, it's economic data. What makes a city a city? That's a question that sometimes, you know, frankly, I don't really think about. So I looked it up. And I'll just say it's pretty simple. What makes a city a city? A civilization is another word for city. And civilization or city is a social order promoting cultural creation with four elements. Here's the four. 
economic provision, political organization, moral traditions, and the pursuit of knowledge, and maybe my favorite, the arts. Some of you may or not, may not know I'm, a, I'm an artist. I, I love art. But really, those four elements in that order, socially promoting cultural creation, is a fancy way of saying people make a city. Think about economic provision, uh, how we provide that by either being an employer or helping those who are not employed. People do those political organizations. People carry out moral traditions. People are on pursuit of knowledge and the arts and pass down knowledge and create art. People make a city. I want you to realize that first and foremost that when we talk about our context on a local level, we're really talking about people. People that make this place uh, home. Every family member at Summit uh, can engage our city here with the connected gospel by, cho- by choosing to be driven in one of four different methods. We talked a little bit about the connected gospel, and it's important just to note, um, just as a review, remember the gospel isn't meant to uh, draw a crowd, it's meant to give the crowd, uh, give to the crowd you have. This is so important for us to be able to be engaged in this. If we remove any of those parts, we really can see them becoming, well, less. We can see the gospel losing its relevance because we remove the parts. If we remove the creation part, we just lose diversity. Everything that God created, everything that it is. If we lose the fall, we can, we can really lose equality. If we, if we, uh, remove justice, excuse me, redemption, uh, we can actually remove biblical justice. And if we remove the new creation or the promise that is, we actually lose community. And here in St. Paul, when we talk about diversity, equality, justice, and community, and the importance of that for us here at Summit, we're really talking about all four parts of the gospel. When you hear those words, uh, community, when you hear those words, justice, equality, diversity, these are words that people have been using for a long time. And in our time, they can become a part of a mantra for different organizations, different perspectives, different realities. But can I just remind you that those four words find their power in the four parts of the gospel. That's where they exist. Let's open our Bibles as we just use that for a little bit of foundation for a part in Acts 3 where Peter actually heals a lame beggar. Acts chapter 3 verse 1. Uh, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. A man lame from birth was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called Beautiful. He would ask for alms to those entering the temple. Seeking, uh, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive some alms. He asked to receive some, some money. And in that space, Peter directed his gaze towards him, as did John, and said, look at us. Peter told this man, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I've got no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took them by the right hand, raised them up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping, he stood up and he began to walk, and he entered the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who had sat at the gate beautiful, asking for alms. They were filled with wonder and amazement of what just happened. A couple things I want to point out when you are on mission with the connected gospel in our city. 
First and foremost, make room for opportunity. In verse 3, you can read, Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them to receive alms. When he saw Peter uh, there, uh, let me back up here. When, when, they're, when they're going to the temple on a, on a consistent action, there's room here for opportunity. They, they went to the temple to see this, uh, to, to go there for prayer, and they saw this man and they stopped. And they made room for opportunity. Many times in our schedule, in the busyness of our lives, in our appointments, as we go through our city or we go through our lives, we have to get to the next appointment that we actually miss the appointment. We, we do not make room for the opportunity because we look over the opportunity to the scheduled calendar moment, the, the kairos moment or the, the chronological um, moment rather, the kairos moment, the opportune moment, the right place at the right time. Those are the things we got to make room for. And Peter and John, when they're going to temple, they saw him and they make room for this opportunity. In verse 3, I love when he saw, um, you know, the, the, the people, uh, Peter and John, the, the blind beggar, uh, or excuse me, the, the lame beggar saw them. He looked at them and Peter looked straight at him. Scripture says in verse 4, and Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us. So Peter first looks at this man and he notices him. And so when you're going through the city uh, on mission in this context, make room for the opportunity. Really easy way to do that is maybe just take an extra 15 minutes. Don't book yourself so stupid busy that you can't get there right at the buzzer. Maybe get there a few minutes early and ask the Holy Spirit to make room for an opportunity. And then notice the people around you. You know, my coach used to tell me in football, keep your head on a swivel. You know, I was an outside linebacker. I played defensive end. I was a tight end. Um, I was a punter, kicker. I played a bunch of positions. I loved football. It's amazing. I got these massive hands. I could wrap my hand around a ball. It's it just it's a lot of, it's an amazing season in my life. I, I, I could throw a football a quarter mile. The coach would have put me in fourth quarter. Uh, that's a, Uncle Rico reference if you don't get it. And if you don't get who Uncle Rico is, well, uh, I'm sorry that your life has not arrived. The truth is, uh, he always would tell me, keep your head on a swivel, you know, look around, keep, keep looking around because you, you gotta see your left and right. And in the same way, when you're on mission with a connected gospel on a local level, going about your day and you made room for opportunity, start looking around, keep your head on a swivel. And I'll just say, you know, when people are there, um, just by way of making sure you're encouraged in this, I know sometimes we see people that need something, and there's a part of us that go, oh, yeah, they're going to use this for something bad, or they're going to use this something for... We go through all the lists of why we shouldn't help these people, or why we shouldn't notice them. You know, their misuse... It doesn't excuse you to do nothing. Their misuse of the gift doesn't excuse you for giving the gift. This is so important for us to grab a hold of. Um, I love what Peter and John says to them. He, he says, as he sees them, he says, look at me. And that is a really great way to restore someone's dignity. Ask those in your life, contextually, here, locally, when you're going through this city and you've made room for opportunity and you, you're looking around, ask them to look at you. Ask them to be with you. And in that space, when you ask them to give you your attention, you actually now have arrived at the spot where conversation can happen and the Holy Spirit can work on that heart for conversion. Acts 3 teaches us three things. To make room for opportunity, to make notice of those around us, and to ask those around us to be with us. Give them their attention to us. This is so important on a local 
level, contextually, when you're doing ministry in a city. Now, you can engage the city in four different ways, and we're going to talk about those in a future message. Because there are four different ways, and Jesus teaches us one of those ways. So my question for you is, this week, when you're on mission, on a local level, in your city, are you going to make room for opportunity? Are you going to notice the people around you? And are you going to ask them to give you their attention? Because you may not have silver and gold, but what you do have, what you do have is the Holy Spirit traveling with you, living inside of you, and that connected gospel, that power. And once you serve it, you never know who's going to leap and eat and find themselves in Christ. To help you apply the truth found in scripture, we always like to ask three questions. What did you learn about God? What did you learn about yourself? And how are you going to apply what the Holy Spirit is speaking through scripture to your life? We hope that these questions help bring clarity for you. Thank you for being a part of our online encounter. Join us in person sometime as we gather as a church on Summit Avenue or join us here virtually again next week. Let me just say, our city of St. Paul is absolutely amazing. I encourage you to check out all the history it has to offer. And you need to know Summit Church, this church has been a part of that history with so many amazing churches in our city. But speaking specifically about the people of Summit, well, we've been gathering here since 1932. And my hope is that this would be a rich history. It would be our forward legacy. History is a thing of the past, but legacy, it makes way, you know, for the future. So the question I have for us is, where are we going? Uh, That is a good question. Our vision is simple. It's really to see all of people and beyond living as disciples of Christ, people full of hope, uh, fully known, actively loving one another, living a spirit-led life. Our mission, it's also simple as well, to provide rhythm, location, opportunity for you to have a life-changing experience with God. Uh, You know, we all journey in our diversity to do these three things. Become disciples of Jesus, deliver hope, and to champion our city. That's where we're going and that's what we're doing. So maybe a question for you is where are you going? You know, what are your next steps? I would encourage you to do this. Join one of our monthly expeditions. The expedition is a simple experience where you can find out more about who you are in Christ, who Summit Church is, what we do around here, and how you can maybe even you know, play a part. It's less than two hours of your time uh, for the whole month. We also feed you amazing food and even provide childcare. So the question is, where are you going? Hopefully to the expedition is my thought. We're all on a journey following Jesus, maybe together. We just might not be us without you. We'll see you at the summit.